Hello friends, we are talking about speech today. Now speech is something which we take for granted, but in actuality speech is a very complicated process. And in order to understand it, we must break it down, speech that is, into its constituents. Now we will start with phonetics. Phonetics is a branch of acoustics concerned with speech processes including its production, perception and acoustic analysis. Now you have to also understand the meaning of acoustics which is study of the physical properties of sound and its perception. Human speech is a very complicated process. It involves heavy usage of the brain, a lot of muscles in the vocal box and also our breathing. We have to learn to speak a language and once we form a perception of a word and a language, we pretty much speak the same as we have saved just a single memory of that word. Like for example, if I try to say America or Canada, I have formed a muscle memory of that word to be spoken. That means how I will be coordinating my tongue, lips, heart, palate, vellum, etc. And also breathing to speak these, uh, these words. Now if you ask a villager from the hinterland of Punjab, he will normally spell out these countries name as Canada or America. So that is the way he has the memory of that words to be spoken. I therefore urge the students to master the words as they come by to the very perfection because that is the way it is going to stay with them the rest of their lives. I have met and interacted with news readers from various TV news channels. Believe me, they speak very much in the same measured tone and style in which they do it on radio or television. Welcome, you're watching NDTV and all the news from the world of politics, sports and entertainment right here. Anchoring a TV news broadcast is much more difficult than it actually appears. Good anchors just don't read, they think, they multitask and then communicate a story with emotion and empathy. I guess the Congress hasn't quite resolved the 1984 conundrum. Now moving on to politics of another kind, India's cricket tour of Pakistan in January 2009 looks to be in some trouble. I wouldn't say I had a long, I, I wouldn't say that I knew her uh, regularly and consistently as I would perhaps know somebody who regularly supplied me information on politics uh, because she was more in the world of business but in India the world of business often overlaps with the world of politics and uh, so I would speak to her from time to time she would sometimes call. So if you are taking speech casually it will be beyond your reach and control to master it simply because we need too many words in our lexicon to properly communicate and express. Now let us first try to describe the elements involved in speech but to give you an idea of that, let us first see this video, which is a real-time imaging in magnetic resonance imaging, that is MRI, which is a kind of diagonistic technique, which allows you to see at any level inside the human body. Welcome to the science gallery of the Max Planck Society. Let us see this again. Welcome to the science gallery of the Max Planck Society. Now let us talk about larynx. Larynx is also called the voice box, which is primarily an organ for producing sound, but it also acts like a valve to allow air and take evasive action to prevent any foreign material from going down the throat. The larynx houses the vocal cords and it also plays an important part in pitch and intonation. In male, 
larynx protrudes a bit out while it is less prominent in females. It is constructed from three cartilages which are thyroid, cricoid and artenoid. Of these three, the thyroid is the largest and is at the front of the larynx and forms the boxy shape of the larynx. It consists of two plates which are joined at an angle at the front. Female thyroids are at a wider angle than male thyroids. So the point where the plates meet is more obvious in males than in females. The cricoid cartilage is a sort of ring shape underneath the thyroid. It forms the bottom part of the box, that is the voice box of course. It has two extensions in the back, one on each side, which reach up to behind the bottom part of the thyroid. The two artenoid cartilages sit on top of the back of the cricoid cartilage. They can move together and apart rock backward and forwards as well as rotate. The vocal folds are two ligaments that is fibrous tissues which are covered in mucous membrane. In the middle they are hanging free. For breathing the vocal folds are open and held wide apart so that air can pass in and out of lungs unimpeded. The vibrations of the folds is not caused directly by commands from brain telling the folds to open and close rather it is caused by having the right amount of tensions across the folds. When the folds are shut the air below them cannot escape yet the pressure from the rib muscles has the effect of forcing the air out. So the pressure builds up below the glottis. Once this pressure is great enough, it forces the folds to open from below until eventually they come open. Now the tension across the vocal folds forces them back together again, making a closure again. The process now repeats itself. The folds are closed and air cannot escape through the glottis. So the pressure builds up, the folds are forced open, the pressure equalizes, the folds close again. The cycle of opening and closing is an aerodynamic effect called Bernoulli effect. The rate of vocal fold vibration affects the perceived pitch of speech. The faster the rate of vibration of the vocal folds, the higher is the pitch in the speech signal will sound. Correspondingly, the lower the rate of vibration of the vocal folds, lower in the pitch speech signal will sound. We now come to the other parts of speech organs that is hyoid bone. Hyoid bone is a horse shoe shaped bone situated in the anterior midline of the neck between chin and the thyroid cartilage. At the rest it lies at the level of the base of the mandible in front and the third cervical vertebra that is C3. The hyoid is attached by muscles from the anterior, posterior and inferior directions and aids in tongue movement and swallowing. The hyoid bone provides attachment to the muscles of the floor of the mouth and the tongue above, the larynx below and the epiglottis and to the pharynx from behind. Now the epiglottis is a small flap shaped organ made of elastic cartilage tissue and is covered with mucous membrane. The epiglottis is attached to the entrance of larynx. 
it is normally positioned up when breathing, but while swallowing the epiglottis folds down to a more horizontal position. In this manner it prevents food from going into the trachea and instead directs it to the esophagus which is the posterior. The pharynx is the part of throat just anterior to mouth and nasal cavity. Both food and breath passes from it and it forms an important part of vocal cavity. Uvula is a conic projection from the posterior edge of the middle of soft palate composed of connective tissue containing a number of racemose glands and some muscular fibers. The uvula which is a kind of flappy fleshy appendage in the middle of throat plays a role in articulation sounds of the human speech. The uvula works in association with the back of the throat, the palate and the air coming up from the lungs to create a number of guttural and other sounds. Now the soft palate is movable consisting of muscle fibers covered with mucous membrane. It is responsible for closing off the nasal passages during the act of swallowing and also for closing off the airway. The nasal cavity is the area which houses both the nostrils and is an important resonance spot for the speech sounds. Now hard palate is a bony plate in the region of upper mouth. The interaction between the tongue and the hard palate is essential in the formation of certain speech sounds notably T, D, J. Now we come to alveolar ridge which is a jaw ridge on the upper and lower side of the mouth between upper teeth and the hard palate or on the bottom of the mouth behind the lower teeth. The alveolar ridges contain the sockets that is alveoli of the teeth. Of course there is the upper lip, the teeth and the lower lip. Now let us have a look at the tongue. This is the tip and this portion just behind the tip is called blade. This portion is the tongue's body and this region is the back of the tongue and this is the tongue's root. Now let us talk about the other factors of speech. The pitch of speech is regarding the rate of vibration or frequency produced by vocal cords. In other words, if the pitch of a voice is higher, that means that the rate of vibrations of vocal cords is high. It is related to the rate of vibration of the vocal folds. Now pitch is not exactly something that we can quantify in terms of physics but it is related more to the concept of psychoacoustics or the perception of hearing. The rate of vibration of the vocal folds is called the fundamental frequency as it is the lowest component frequency of speech. Fundamental frequency can be abbreviated as F0. Now the voicing process happens when the air from the lungs is expelled and this in turn creates low pressure area in larynx. The decrease in pressure causes vocal cords to vibrate. This vibration is mostly lateral. This oscillation of the vocal cords modulate the air in the voice box and becomes the major component of speech. Now the sound emanating from the larynx is harmonic in nature. That means the speech comprises fundamental frequency 
and harmonic frequencies which are the multiples of the fundamental frequency. The resonance pattern excites the vocal tract and give characteristic nature to an individual's voice. To understand this, it is important to note that relation between pitch and fundamental frequency is harmonic in nature. Linear relationships are where an absolute difference of a certain number of units always has the same effect. For example, if the pitch relationship were linear, then the difference between 100 hertz and 200 hertz would sound like the same difference as between 200 hertz and 300 hertz, that is a difference of 100 hertz in each case. For logarithm relations, the important factor is the proportionality. For example, the difference between 100 hertz and 200 hertz sounds the same as the difference between 200 hertz and 400 hertz because in each case the second figure is twice the first one, a proportion of 1 is to 2. The difference between 200 hertz and 300 hertz is not in the proportion 1 to, but it is in the proportion of 1 is to 1.5. In other words, the harmonic frequencies in terms of our perception appears to be grouped together in terms of multiples of fundamental frequency. So, the fundamental frequency of 200 hertz will have a first harmonic of 400 hertz and second harmonic of 600 hertz and third harmonic of 800 hertz and so on. We can produce fundamental frequency in a particular range. This range depends a lot on our body structure, sex, age and health. The average fundamental frequency range for male speakers is about 120 hertz, while the female speakers have a higher range of about 230 hertz. So, female range can be quantified from 120 to 300 hertz and the male voice ranges from 70 to 250 hertz. The difference between male and female voice are due to anatomical differences in the structure of larynx and the voice tract. In males, the thyroid cartilage is narrower than females. That means it has got less tension than that of a female one. The children of both sexes have more or less the same fundamental frequency and with the onset of puberty, changes in their respective vocal tract are made and they have uh, then they attain their respective natural vocal characteristic. Now, let us talk about another important aspect of speech which is intonation. Intonation is the variation in the pitch of a speech. Now, pitch variation purpose is not to distinguish words, but to give importance to a word, but this is again different from emphasis. Intonation, rhythm and stress are important constituents of English language. Intonation involves rising or falling pitch. It is found in a lot of languages which uses intonation to convey surprise, to emphasize and tonal languages uses it for distinguishing words. And there are four types of intonation in general that is rising intonation, which is pitch rises and is represented in the international phonetic alphabet as a rising arrow like are you going to the university falling intonation is in which the pitch is following and is represented by the arrow going downwards yes i am going to the university rising and falling intonation are marked with a diagonal arrow rising left to right and falling left to right respectively. The rise fall in which pitch rises and falls is represented by the symbol. How do you manage to get up so early? Fall rise is in which the pitch falls and rises. For example, well here you are 
or notice the following intonation when we say great and then great. Notice that volume or intensity remains the same, but the pitch is more in the case of latter. Now, to summarize the whole thing, we must understand that speech is a complicated process, it involves a lot of organs, it involves uh, right from vocal box and there are different type of cartilages like thyroid, tricord and artenoid. It has got uh, again trachea has got an important role in it, the nasal cavity, the tongue. Uh, has got a different uh, role in it. The roof of the mouth is an important organ, uh, the front of the mouth, the backward, the teeth. In fact, the whole head actually acts as a voice box or a resonance structure and it plays an important part in voice formulation. And then there are different concepts like Bernoulli effect and about uh, the differences between male and female voice box and concepts like pitch and intonation which are important to be understood if we are to talk about speech in an academic manner. I hope we have learnt a lot from this interaction. Thank you so much for listening.